Uh, uh, welcome everybody. Um, happy Thursday. And uh, we have a guest today all the way from Finland, Arto Tienaho. Arto, welcome. Thank you, Elena. I'm here in Kauhajoki, Finland, to be exact. I don't think I can pronounce it at the moment. <laughs> That's all right. Arto, you are a part of uh, our community, v Vancouver community. Yes. Uh, as I understand, as uh, I remember, during COVID, you made this big move. You moved from one country to another. Mm hmm Yeah? Yes, I did. And my question to you from, from us, from, from us in Vancouver, is uh, about decision-making. Can you please um, provide us with your assistance or advice on how in this process of decision making to master a courage to make a big move especially in these circumstances COVID times any advice from you well um that's that is a good question and and it's it's a big question as well because i do know that um everybody's personality type is different and for some people they really need to uh, check all the boxes and to do a real careful analysis of pros and cons of, of moving or making a big life decision and they need to put together a whole lot of, of, of data or information uh, for instance, temperatures, how close to a hospital, how close to a town, how close to shopping centers, things like that. But uh, for me, uh, a big part of my decision making is not only taking into consideration those kinds of facts, but sometimes in life we have things that, that happen to us that is a little bit different. It's, it touches the heart a little bit more. It, it's something that you feel. Uh, so th I, I would say that the whole reason for coming here wasn't a, a, a big analysis. It started out a year ago mm -hmm. with just a simple vacation. Okay. Vacation, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I was here last year, last summer, for three months with my mother, who is uh, getting on in years. She's in her 80s. And because she has siblings in Sweden, I decided that wouldn't it be nice for her to see them. And at that time, it, the feeling was this was the last time she would see them uh, because she's not really fond of traveling great distances. I remember, so you, we went. I remember you told me that you said, your, your mom said, your mom said that that's probably the last time I am going to Finland, fin, Finland, yes. not flying. And here you yes. move to Finland, both of Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, that's why, you know, they say, be careful what, what you wish for, be careful what you say, because sometimes in some ways the opposite can happen. Now, the, as far as being here and ending up here, what happened was, we were in Sweden for several weeks and then came to Finland to my father's side of, of things and, and his hometown. Yes. We were staying at an Airbnb, um, a, a probably a couple kilometers from here. And I was going to my cousin's house that morning to borrow a bicycle so I could ride, ride a bicycle through these beautiful farm fields and and that sort of thing. And on my walk here, I noticed some beautiful purple wildflowers and a really sort of immaculate birch forest. And so I started taking pictures of it and uh, walked up to my cousins and I started showing her some pictures of, of Sweden and all of that. And as we got further into the camera roll, uh, we, we got to these last pictures, which were of the property here. And uh, because my, uh, my cousin was fully aware of where this was, she said, oh, did you know that that place is for sale? Mm -hmm. So I said, well, that's interesting. 
and didn't think more of it. But uh, when I was riding the bicycle back to the Airbnb, I decided to pull into the driveway and just have a closer look at this place. Yes. I rode the bicycle into the property. I looked around for a while and I felt, I felt this <laughs> real connection or this sense of calm being on this piece of property. And I sat there for about 10 minutes in just absolute quiet, just listening to the sounds of the forest. And, and I had this feeling that I thought to myself, if it was snowy, if it was dark, if it was raining sideways, how would I feel standing here looking out at the, the woods here? How would I feel differently? Because it was a beautiful sunny day. And I thought to myself, I think I'd feel really good here no matter what. So when I got back to the Airbnb, I called my cousin and I said, is there any chance of, of seeing the place? Because the truth is there was absolutely no advertising here on the property at all. There's no signs, nothing. Okay. <laughs> Arta, thank you very much for sharing this um, basically a, a extraordinary decision to move yes. from one country to another, although both are very beautiful. Uh, and, and because we want to make this interview not too long, so people can watch anytime, you know, before yes. work, after work, yes. Um, I would like to reiterate, what I hear from you is that the courage was not something calculated in your head only, but it's more about synchronicity, about coherence between, I guess, heart, and mine to, together, somehow they work together for you in this. Decision. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. It, it um, I mean, they say the two biggest stressors in life are doing a big renovation or a house build and a move. Mm -hmm. And add on to that uh, coronavirus time, add on to that uh, the fact that it was a move to another country where it is not my first language. And I'll add on to that, we actually have a, a, a large renovation going on as we speak. Yeah. Uh, but the one thing that I thought to myself also with coming here and all the rest of it was, while my circumstances can change, the one thing that I have absolute, complete control over is my attitude toward all of it. That's a and beautiful statement, Arto. Beautiful. And very clear, too. <laughs> well, the, the first two flights that were booked were canceled. So I was scrambling to get here because I had uh, some carpenters ready to work. I had a work permit that was already through. I know that the only building season here is in the summer. Mm -hmm. And in all honesty, with the, I mean, it was perhaps luck as well, but the coronavirus rate here is very, very slight. And the town that I'm living in, it's zero. So in a weird way, we're living in this little bubble of, of, of uh, not having, I mean, there are, there are, sanitizing stations everywhere there's social distancing happening but when i'm sitting here on on the property i mean social distancing is a lifestyle it's not a choice <laughs> thank you very much for this good laugh <laughs> this morning as well so the take out from this uh, little uh, video is uh, arto you say work on your attitude yes yes well, I would say your attitude is, is yours and yours alone. So regardless of circumstance, make the most of what you can. If it feels like a crisis, make it a learning opportunity. And then when that crisis has passed, as most things do, this too shall pass. Yes. Uh, be yes. aware that, that the, the, the sweet days and the wonderful things in life are, are that much better if you can actually get through those tough times uh, with a good attitude. Thank you, Arta. Thank you. And uh, we wish you uh, good luck in a new place to you, to your mom, to your family. And I know Thank you. You, you do provide coaching services online. Uh, 
Yes, yes. I've been doing some, as my background was with Anxiety BC for almost eight years, uh, and I've had my own uh, history of anxiety through my life and, and learning some really good, helpful tools, tips, and techniques and, and ways to manage. But the good thing about that is you get to a place where, where everything is sweeter and better and you actually have more courage to do more than you ever would have before if you apply that sort of uh, thing toward every day of your life. Thank you very much. Arthur, how, how can people reach you if they would like to have a board? Mm -hmm. Well, if, if